Uh, may the Lord be glorified. May the Lord be exalted. Nataka uh, nishukuru intercessors wale ambao wanatumika uh, kwa mwito wa Bwana. Intercessors ambao wanatumika kwa mwito wa Bwana. Mungu atakuwa anakupatia burden na ujue jinsi ya kuomba. Huyo ni intercessor ambaye ni Mungu ameinua. Mungu anakupatia mzigo, alafu anakupia mwelekeo jinsi ya kuenenda. So such intercessors are the intercessors that uh, will be very handy than those ones who are instructed and those ones who are actually solicited. So I want to thank God that um, I'm here by the doing of God and the grace of God. Appreciating God for those who take it as a burden to pray for this ministry and to pray for me, the servant of God, and to pray uh, for the work that I do. I am, I know, and uh, uh, I know that uh, this ministry is quite a thorn. This ministry is quite, um, uh, is quite, um, you know, uh, a judgment to some quarters. Um, uh, in the Republic and some certain constituencies uh, in the body of Christ. Not all the entire body of Christ are pained by my prophecies, but there is a section, a session of leaders in church, a session of leaders in the, in the regime. And uh, for that, I want just to thank God for those who take it to pray, because uh, it is God who shall reward you uh, for your prayers. And uh, also in church, we want to also, I want to rally intercessors to know how to pray. Because sometimes we experience um, a sabotage in, a, in our broadcast that uh, it is aimed at scuttling and uh, scuttling the efficacy of my ministry. And uh, by doing so, they are trying to sabotage God's work. That said, uh, may as many as uh, supporters of the calling and the course that God has ordained for me uh, celebrate and rejoice because God is a reward. So I pray and declare Psalms 35 and verse number 27 over your life in Jesus' name. I pray that the Lord grant you Shamar in Jesus' name. Uh, let's also just uh, tune in our ears and uh, maybe to give you a preamble, why must I share prophecies? I share prophecies because uh, it's a ministry that God uh, gave me. And uh, it is over the years, so it's not something that began yesterday. Um, it is an office and it's a ministry. If I don't do it, uh, God will hold me um, guilty for the blood of people uh, that will perish in ignorance. Uh, God will hold me guilty uh, for the souls that will perish and enter hell if I don't share prophecies. I preach the word of God um, and sharing prophecies, visions, and uh, revelations as well as insightful counsels is part of my ministry, so I must do the ministry in the fear of God. So I don't share, I don't enter, I'm not into this ministry. Uh, to make enemies, I'm not into it. Uh, to, uh, to make a name, neither am I need to to seek for glory. No, I mean it just like uh, any other prophets whom God raised in the times of the old and uh, they had no choice but to do what God called them to do. And so I desire that uh, those who um, follow me and those who tune in to these prophecies, it is not for fun. And uh, please do not bring fun on our walls. Do not bring fun on our channel. It is not fun. This is this is ministry. This is ministry and no one pays me. I've never solicited for any payment and I'm not seeking for any favors. I'm just doing it because it is a calling. And um, there are people who will be delivered when I share prophecies. There are people who are enlightened, especially intercessors in Kenya. They are enlightened on how to pray. And um, today and uh, since Tuesday, I gave an exposition that, um, that uh, on Tuesday should really help many. And today I'm bringing prophecies and actually these are prophets' insight. So today I'm sharing the insight that God has given me uh, concerning, uh, concerning actually our republic. And also this will concern the church. 
and uh, concerning the church. So when I talk of the church, I talk of uh, believers in Christ Jesus. And actually, I'll be very impressed to call the remnants. If I can reach to the remnants, then praise God. So, whereas others may want to hear it and just hear, uh, my target is the remnants, so that remnants know how to pray. Number two, remnants know how to stand. Because during this season and times, you may fall. So, I have twin messages. So, one is actually uh, what goes as a prophecy. The other one is what will be coming in as a as insight to the end times so that's an exposition that may take some quite a good time number two but number one is actually uh, this one that um, is with my insight insightful revelations about um, Naruto's um, going to America if you're a prophet if you're an intercessor you are a pastor you are a minister take me very serious we are in dangerous times. And these are the times if you, if you make wrong prayers, uh, you may not make a headway. So you need to make right prayers. And then you need to walk right. Then you need to be informed what is going on. I'm reminded of the, I'm reminded of, uh, the sons of Issachar. Bible says, and the sons of Issachar, were them that uh, were, were graced by God with the understanding of times. The children of Issachar, the sons of Issachar. So it is God who actually endowed them with the understanding of times. So understanding of times is a gift of prophecies. It's actually a gift in the prophetics. It falls under eschatology. That's uh, knowing the end times. So the sons of Issachar were of them that were given in eschatology. The world right now needs prophets who will be their eyes to see into the realm of the spirit and be able to read the times and tell the nation uh, where are we and what is going on. So this is a ministry. It is not for cash. It's not for money. It is God ordained that such a time we'll be able to, you know, to tell. So Daniel and as well as um, Joseph were actually prophets. And um, God will use Daniel to tell us and to tell the people of his times uh, where I mean, what dispensation are we in? What are we expecting? So you be informed so that you know how to go about, lest you fall when others are falling. We are not meant to fall with everybody. Sadly, in Kenya today, kings, I mean, we have uh, slaves riding on chariots, and kings are actually trading on foot. So it's the reverse. Whereas we should have kings on the throne, we have kings on the streets. So when we should have uh, subjects on the streets, we have slaves who are subjects now on the throne. So it's actually, it's actually um, a bad state of affairs. And uh, someone needs to tell the nation that uh, we are not doing well, we are doing bad. Both as a state and as a church, we are doing bad. And if we don't expose the road that is actually happening, then the Church of Kenya will not, will not, uh, will not know its place uh, and how to pursue after revival. So Daniel will tell the people um, of his times uh, what is expected and what is actually going to come to pass. Uh, Joseph will do the same. Joseph will be given to also uh, telling about the future. So it's not just, we're not just futuristic. There's a difference between being uh, futuristic and uh, being, uh, uh, being uh, prophetic. Uh, prophetic
music actually is actually the entire uh, uh, actually the, the the entire calling whereas futuristic is just um, a wing of it telling the future something about future I want us to know that uh, even Satan can be futuristic so there are prophets that are of Satan they can tell you what is coming to pass and so that's why Kenya we we, we are false uh, we are false futuristics uh, not not that they are false it is because their anointing is not of God that's why they are referred to as false but Satan can prophesy Satan can give us insight Satan can uh, can prophesy so that one uh, should not really uh, make us uh, mix make us uh, So Satan can also prophesy. And he has his prophets in the nation who can prophesy. Question is, from which source are you receiving prophecies? From what source are you receiving? And uh, I bring uh, for us from God, that which God has revealed to me. So uh, what God reveals to me is what I also reveal to you. About um, Ruto, uh, about Ruto now and um, United States. I'm not getting this one proper. Please, one degree up. Sante Buana. That's fine. Sante, yes. I want to first thank God for prophecies that are coming to pass. And they are coming to pass. And uh, thank God that um, uh, those who have been following prophecies have seen that uh, what I've said, God has been confirming them. And uh, for those of us in Mount Kenya, uh, be very afraid because um, if you don't repent, you shall wallow in the judgment that is eating Mount Kenya. About to go into the United States, and uh, Ruto being elevated uh, with the Americans. Uh, let it be known that Satan has a grand agenda in the Republic of Kenya. So these are, there is a, a great agenda that Satan has uh, in the Republic of Kenya. So if you're a prophet, take this one serious. Unfortunately, our Kenyan clergy, the top cream, they are blind. They will never want to, I mean, they won't take me serious. Just like they have, they have never done before. And I doubt if they'll ever do it. So our Kenyan, uh, Kenyan church leaders, uh, the, the ones actually who have um, helped fashion not to be what he is today. And uh, I don't expect them to even listen to me. But uh, let it be said anyway for records and for those who may want to learn, for those who may want to repent, and for those who may want to be informed so that you know how to hold and you know how to pray. Uh, America is not just loving Ruto. And if Ruto will hear me, Ruto will be very afraid. America don't mean well for us as a nation. America actually have an interest. And uh, Kenya should regret why Ruto came to power. Kenya should regret, and the Church of Kenya should really regret having Ruto as your president. And I was just like, God, what if it was Raila? Would this have happened? Because um, Ruto is actually being fashioned by the uh, by the Americans. He's being fashioned to be a gateway of apostasy, the end time apostasy in Kenya. So sad that uh, the Church of Kenya may not be really seeing this one. I mean, the top clergy may not be seeing this one, as I put it. But maybe you may God maybe maybe there can be a quickening for you to understand. That um, America is not just giving Kenya goodies. And America are not just becoming nice. Uncle Biden 
isn't just becoming nice for nothing. And it's not just Biden. Biden is actually an epitome of a certain force. Biden is an institution. America is an institution. Behind it all, there is a hand of the devil. There is a devil's hand. You will see soon that uh, the investments and the investors that are coming from America to invest in Kenya, they are coming in with their gods. They are coming in with their faith. They are coming in with their convictions. They are coming in with their power. To preach in Kenya will be very hard. To preach the true gospel in Kenya in the near in the years that are coming will be really hard. Hard in the sense that we'll, you will have to prophets in Kenya will have to wrestle with the principalities and forces of darkness that have been given a legal ground. Just like it is in Nigeria. Nigeria are fighting uh, powers that have actually refused Nigeria's revival. South Africa's church cannot uh, preach Christ proper because uh, they are wrestling real powers. The same thing with Ghana. America compromised Ghana. So, Ghana's economy is thriving. But not by the help of God. Nigeria's economy is thriving. But not by the work of God. America is behind it. We give you goodies, but allow our investors. These are investors, number one. They have no fear of God. They never profess Jesus as the Lord and Savior of their lives. But they have money. They have wealth. They are very innovative. So they want space where to sell their innovations. They want room to dominate, to have dominance and manifest their innovations with the aim of making money but also uh, uh, making influence. Now, part, part of the influence they are actually seeking is that they influence our space then they dominate our realm of the spirit. By their dominance of the realm of the spirit, uh, the church and those who are church heads or church uh, principalities, those who are voices in the church, will slumber. That is how they have done it in America. So America, those who own America are actually uh, the new age uh, the new age family. They own America. They have a voice in America. They dictate America uh, politics. They dictate state uh, White House. They have the money. They control the economy. And no one touches them. Their Satan's eyes is on Kenya. And someone who has been following my prophecies, I told you that the next, uh, the next, uh, the next um, point or the next, uh, uh, the next frontier that Satan targets is Kenya. And uh, Kenya is a gateway. For Africa. And why Kenya? It is because the Bible. 
has revealed openly that Kenya plays a pivotal role in the end times revival. That's an open prophecy in the Bible. And so Kenya is very key uh, in the end time global awakening. And so Satan wants to hinder it. And uh, always Satan wants to be near where God is. You open a two church, Satan opens his church next door. That's how Satan operates. You raise a true prophet, Satan raises his false prophet next besides. And so, preaching in Kenya in the future will take servants of God that have revelation. In those who are no lovers of the world, no lovers of themselves. And Satan has his eyes set on Kenya. So, the coming in of uh, investors, I told you before, that during Ruto's time, Ruto's regime, there shall be white men, white-skinned fellows. They shall access, they shall have access into a republic. Not because uh, they love God and they love Kenya. No. Kenya has been there for 60 years. Uh, I mean, has been there. Their love for Kenya is not just sudden. It is because of what we call Kairos. This is a season. There are forces that uh, were behind Ruto uh, coming into power. There are forces that uh, were behind Raila coming into power. Now, these forces have, have been fighting. Ruto's, I told you, Ruto's presidency will not be a blessing for the republic. And I want Kenya that Ruto's presidency will actually be a will be a hindrance, will be an impeding of revival. So whereas he, he appears like he champions revival, actually he is not championing revival. Ruto is a decoy. In the realm of the spirit, he is a decoy. He is actually one that uh, quenches and has quenched and actually uh, erodes the gains of the church in the Republic of Kenya. Unfortunately, our bishops, our pastors, our prophets, our clergy, they have been so blind, they have not seen it. During Richard Ruto's time, the church is dying. The church is dying. The church is dying. The church is stifled. And we know where we are by accident. We are where we are calculatively. And uh, that's not the end. By the time God brings Ruto down, everybody will have known why. So, uh, the way Ruto has been fashioned, the West has become aggressive and the West is now on a higher gear, a higher drive, apostasy. Kenya is going to be apostatized. Apostatized. The word apostatization is the element of uh, returning back Kenya to backsliding. Is an aspect of using uh, the West wants to use their businessmen, the West wants to use their investors, uh, the West that is actually led by America, they want to employ certain actually is in the matrix to have this um, these are uh, atheists. Atheists are people who do not believe in God. They believe in their wealth. They don't mention God in their substance. They don't mention God in their wealth. They do not mention God's name in their efforts. Someone sometimes hear their tourists when they land in Kenya and uh, they are like, you, you hear in abundance of their conversation, these tourists don't mention even, hey, God has helped us, we have, become, we have gone through the winds and the storm and here we are. Oh, we thank, you don't hear them say they thank God. 
you hear a people that uh, the word God is strange in their vocabulary. Those are the tourists that uh, our Mombasa, I mean our coastal communities, they give their girls to. These are persons that import strange doctrines into our nation. And this time round, Ruto has opened them a wide gate. No tax. And if they are raised, they are make, uh, they try to make them uh, oppress the locals, but embrace the foreigners. Oppress the locals, but embrace foreigners. Oppress the locals, but embrace. Some of you will cast your own president. In, uh, there are incentives to lure the foreigners. Free visa, I don't know, free what, free this, free this, free that. Eh? No tax on this, no tax on that, no tax on this. Yani, in other words, you foreigners coming, come, 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 come. We even like want to pay for your coming. And so they are coming. And you should ask yourself questions. Why all of a sudden we have the big shots? Owners of, uh, you know, owners of Facebook, owners of Microsoft, owners of YouTube, you know, owners of uh, satellites. The who are who's on the globe? Suddenly they have become. Suddenly they have become. Uh, their eyes are on Ruto. Suddenly, all of them. Ruto is their man. All of a sudden, even if you never, you are a prophet. These all should uh, should drive you into thinking. Why? It is a greater agenda than Ruto himself. This one is greater than the nation itself. Kenya enters uh, the global matrix of the end time apostasy. It is entering during Ruto's time. We have entered. Kama ujaokoka, if you have never given, if you have never been serious with God, start being serious. The one world order is falling into place piece by piece. The jigsaw puzzle is actually falling into place. Ruto in the matrix. Does he really know? I doubt. Some will tell me, Unawaniam Kalenjin. Please, this one is beyond Kalenjin. Kenya enters the matrix of the global uh, agenda. One world religion. So, kill the religion, I mean, kill the quest for God in a nation. Raise the king. Have the heathens uh, uh, be vocal. But have the subjects lose uh, their voice on matters God. No one will want to hear about God. So there is where God will be like, who are the remnants to count on? God will where are the remnants? Now, the other day, I had God ask me a question. I don't know if it was a question. And uh, it came when I was preparing. And what I heard, the voice is that, uh, can, God, can God count on you? Can God count on you, Onyango? And I, I got to understand that last question that also goes to many of us who are remnants. Can God count on you? God is like, ah, there are people you can count on. 
Because God is not into a competition. He's not competing with anybody. God is God. However, the end times was, I mean, the events of the end times were bound to come. And so, Ruto is not one that God can bank on. Sadly, Ruto is not bankable. He's, he is fallen. He's into dalliance with the, you know, with the, the anti-God. Now, Psalms chapter 1. The Bible says that blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Neither does he sit in the counsel or in the congregation of sinners. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 13, 14, 15, going on verse 17. The Bible says, what concord do you have? With the wicked. What alliance do you have? Um, with the heathens. What agreement do you have with those who are not for God? America has been apostatized by the wealthy. But they, you know, I don't even know. We should not even call them tycoons. I don't know what to call them. They have actually washed America with their monies. They have watered fear of God in America. And today, most of these elements, they support the LGBTQ something. So you accept them. And now you saw in our, our Kenyan embassies, very soon they'll be singing their national anthem, not only hoisting their flag. You may end up finding that even our Kenyan state house will be hosting the flag of uh, LGBTQ something. That thing is all a joke. Our courts have already accepted it. Our government has actually embraced it. And Ruto has never condemned it. Museveni is the only president that has gone public to condemn it. I want Ruto to know. He has embraced Uncle Dan. I mean, Uncle. Eh? Today is Uncle Biden with everything. He's embraced him. Embracing these fellows, the, the investors that are coming, they are coming with their gods and their idols. They idolize money, wealth, technology. And they are bad abominable manners. You can't take them to court because court is theirs. Ruto has embraced them. The Ruto's going to America is very significant in the realm of the spirit. Kenya is sold. Kenya is given. And by so doing, Kenya enters the end times uh, global arithmetics for apostasy. One of my Okoka, those of us who are born again, this will make you feel afraid. You have to change how you have to preach in the Republic. You have to change. You even have to change your prayers. Our atmosphere is invaded. These guys are coming. So here Kenya soon will be soon will be hearing Kenya being mentioned among G fifty. You'll hear Kenya is among the G fifty. Something G fifty is coming. Now we have G forty seven. Now there's G forty two. Mara you hear G twenty. Now there's G seven. Now there's G ten. Now you hear top one hundred now, be wary. Kenya now, yeah, you hear G42. Very soon, you start hearing G47. If not G47, G50. Always look where Kenya is in those G something. Global 50, Global 47, Global 42. Now, I don't know that there's under Global 43. Kenya has actually found its space. Not in the fear of God. 
Kenya has given itself to be used. And Ruto be very afraid when the West built you. Be wary of America. When America becomes your lover, be very afraid. Solomon uh, attracted kings from all over the world. Kings from all over, you know, when he was, when he was king. And that's why he also, uh, he also attracted queen, uh, queen of Sheba. Together with the wisdom that uh, Solomon exalted in his fame. And suddenly he had visitors. Sooner or later, uh, Solomon became an uh, extraordinary polygamous king. Not only was he an uh, was he extraordinary uh, polygamous king, he also embraced many gods. Every, every woman and every wife that uh, Solomon will actually embrace, he'll embrace them with their gods. Slowly Solomon abandoned the true God. And Solomon uh, got himself into uh, worshipping other gods. There's no way Ruto will be able to retain his identity as a child of God at the same time mingle, eat, dine and drink with the, with the persons who are not uh, whose Jehovah God isn't their God. There's no way. So the more Ruto has embraced these elements, he's embracing them with their gods. They'll, they'll influence him. He's given them so much. He has given them so much room. And the more the room they are given, they are like, uh, they behave like uh, a camel, uh, which will be asking for refuge because the sun is too hot. And so a camel will want to have at least some refuge for their head. And uh, sooner, uh, no sooner uh, the camel has shoved in his head, then he'll be asking for the ramp also to find accommodation. And if a camel, if the, if the, if the hump enters also, that means the house or the structure will have to be pulled down. That's a riddle for Ruto. You give the West a foot. They are building a foothold. You'll be the first victim. In, his, in history, all the nations America have built, they played a hand in bringing down their kings. All over. They did so with Libya. Muammar Gaddafi. They later brought him down. They did so with Saddam Hussein. They later brought him down. They have done so across the globe. In Africa, I keep saying, remember uh, DRC Congo and the old Zaire. It was America. It is a nation that builds someone, then sacrifices you. It is never God's will. So this, uh, I told you the other day, on Tuesday when I gave that um, uh, prophet's expose, this is actually part two, that uh, you hear Ruto coming from America with, uh, you know, with a list of goody goodies. And uh, delegations will follow him. The ones that are building what? Building what? Building what? Investing in what? Investing in what? They are not seeing the floods. And they are not seeing the... They are not seeing the floods. Neither they are seeing that. They are seeing opportunity. Someone think, who is behind it? 
Satan is behind it. And uh, Kenya, we're in a state right now where all bishops and all pastors that have a voice, they have been zipped up in a bag called State House. They were zipped up in a basket. They have been kept busy eating groundnuts. They are taking peanuts. They are busy chewing popcorns. Others are busy licking honey inside a basket. That basket is full of uh, archbishops, bishops, reverends, pastors, evangelists, uh, who else? Prophets. Then also they have cardinals. They have been kept busy inside a basket. They are no longer busy with God. And they are not busy with warning Kenyans and masses. Neither are they researching the Bible. No. Satan succeeded. And who was the Aspana boy? Ruto was. He bought the church. This man is rich. And this man is smart. This man is smarter. The church fooled him somehow. But he has also fooled the church. Today, there is not a bishop in Kenya who can cough, who can scoff at Ruto and then Ruto shakes. Not even one. In such a time like this, when the nation is going to the dogs, the church will have been actually a voice of reason. Unfortunately, no. Ruto does not fear even me, the prophet of God. He doesn't. He has been made not to fear us. By who? By the prophets and apostles around him. And the pastors around him. He does not fear. Look at it. He swallowed the opposition. And any voice that may happen, may come up as a voice of uh, reason, you are profiled, taken. Unataka nini? Unataka biscuit. Unataka shamba? Amu unataka nyumba. Unataka gari? Amu unataka saa. Amu unataka viatu. This was all Teruto can give you. And today, in our Kenyan politics, there is no voice. Your chapter in Kusha. Kenya is a land that has no opposition. Church and the opposition wing of politicians are very key and vital in a nation being, uh, being stable and being moral. Those two, Ruto has chewed them. So America is helping building Ruto to become a monster. Kenya, you won't love him. You won't love it. You will not love it. Ruto is being built to become a monster. Just like we had some other times when um, the the Britain's um, soldiers, British soldiers will uh, actually go berserk in Nanyuki and uh, impregnate women in Nanyuki rape those they want to rape in Nanyuki and uh, it would be like uh, played under the carpet and no one will arrest them because Kenya is not uh, will not attach the British soldiers because they have come in to, to train in our land and make us smarter people. Just like uh, Kenya never did anything about such British soldiers. Kenya will also never do anything about these investors that are coming in with abominable, abominable uh, practices that will be rampant in our land. 
tourists take our, you know, the white tourists, you know, they do child traffic, prostitution, child pornography. Here in Mombasa West, Mombasa here, a land of Sodom and Gomorrah, children that are, you know, small girls who are 10 years, 16 years, they are taking the tourists and uh, the government has uh, always um, uh, feigned ignorance about it. Tourists come to sample our girls. The old women come to sample our young boys. And the old grandfathers are coming to sample our small girls, who should actually be their grandchildren. But no one touches them because they bring money. They are the investors. They are the in your investors. They come and they, they actually bring rot into our land. They introduce our children. They introduce our wives. Not ours here. There. To strange fashions and doctrines. So that's how they are spoiled and destroyed in Mutuapa. They destroy marriages. There are no churches there. Only clubs. Sodom and Gomorrah. They walk naked. So nowadays if you go to Mombasa, Swahilis are walking naked because Muzungu has actually taught them that's how life is. So if you go to the beach and you are not walking naked, you look so strange. You never shut in a long equanin. Where beach people walk half naked, nude. And so our boys are they actually the ones, the young people there, are the ones who escort these naked people along the shore. You are escorted. Hmm? You're walking naked but escorted. That is our nation. No policeman arrests them, and no court can charge them. Why? It is custom. It is fashion. Now prepare for more. They are coming. There it is in Amsterdam and Miami Beach. Is there you shall have it also in our Kenya and along other beaches. Our own pastors will not talk. Churches will have to be a bit cold. Turn down your theology. Turn down your preaching. Don't be harsh. Don't be strict. Don't be straight. Accommodate them. They are soft. So when you turn down your preaching, you enter what is called complacency. That's how apostasy works. Apostasy simply means Turning your back on God slowly. So you turn your back slowly on God. Turn your back slowly on God. And so these investors are coming that way. Together with their money, you eat their money. That's why even they are preacher. There are some things we preachers don't eat. There are monies we preachers don't receive. When you receive some gifts, they kill your fire. They kill your fire. Similarly, there are donations and grants from the West that given in the land of Kenya, they actually help kill the fire, quench the fire in the nation. If you're a prophet, take me serious. You may be knowing what to pray for. If you're a prophet, take me serious. Ruto has been ensnared. He has entered the devil's trap. Well calculated. So one of the achievements that Biden will be having before he exits America's presidency is that he'll have successfully caged Ruto. Successfully. So that will be one of the achievements that Biden uh, will actually uh, will have achieved before he exits America. To have Ruto into the matrix of the end times. The, the Antichrist Brigade are actually fronted by you know, Microsoft uh, Bill Gates. And it's not, it's not, it's, I mean, it is public. 
these are forces that are well placed by the devil to to be used to infiltrate governments with the aim of actually perpetuating apostasy. Apostasy means people turning away from God, leaving God. And what will be expected? A high rate of backsliders. A high rate of persons who backslide. What will be the proofs of people backsliding? Divorces in marriages. The woman can leave the husband. The husband can leave the woman. Why? Man will have something to do with it. Foreigners will have something to do with it. The government will have something to do with it. The government is making legislations, uh, some legislations easy. So that um, you cannot criminalize these abominable acts. They can't be criminalized. Where is the church? Nowhere. Where is church? Nowhere. Programs as well as uh, you know, uh, activities that will be funded by these NGOs and those investors, they'll be used by the enemy to win souls. To win souls. Pull souls from pursuit of God. Our government, our parliament, and our judiciary will not scoff because some of the goodies that are given are for them. So support for judiciary, support for the parliamentary, support for you know uh, those areas of investment. So there will be no opposition to oppose it. Has Ruto, is Ruto's um, America's trip of any gain to the republic? Oh yes, goodies in the physical. In the spiritual, is a big loss. Kenya enters the end time apostasy. Now that end time apostasy is what will give rise to the Antichrist. So the Antichrist is having his tentacles already. What does it mean to the church? The church will have to really uh, get insight in God as to how to defeat the campaign for apostasy because we need revival. So as at now, that is actually uh, to kill revival. So revival quest cannot be birthed by apostates. Only the righteous can birth revival. That said, and um, whether it will reach Ruto, well, let it reach him. But uh, I can imagine he'll be laughing at Onyango Gimawacho, what Onyango has said. He'll just laugh it. He'll laugh it off. But uh, those who hear me, hear me and hear you well. As I finish, I want to remind the nation once again that uh, go back to the place you abandon God. Because the judgment, the vengeance of God that hits the nation will continue. God will shamar those who are his. I wanted to say something about um, the death of uh, one, the death of this, um, something just struck me and I remembered, thank God that it reminded me about the retired, uh, the late um, general, Dazogola. And uh, just really it was struck me because a year, almost two years ago, uh, I interpreted a vision of um, Ogola's death, but it was not his death. I mean, it was not him, because the face wasn't his. And I'm just like, uh, I said um, about his death that someone, that actually Ogola died someone else's death. And I confirm it. Because uh, when I saw that vision, uh, Kibochi was actually the CDF. And look at Ogola dying someone else's. I saw 
in that vision, Ogola just didn't die. Ogola was killed. I say, why, my Lord? This vision he showed me Kitambo sana. So it came to pass. Those who analyze can analyze. For those who have ears to hear, I've given you something to hear. This is really for Christians to know how to pray. Kenya has entered uh, uh, the global uh, end time apostasy. Father, I have told them, and Lord, I thank you. That will help me, my Father God, to always give out your word as it is, Lord, to help those who may want to be helped. I pray that, Father, you shall actually help us, Lord, who are your remnants, to remain focused and grounded in your word and the truth. When darkness comes, let your light in us swallow that darkness. I pray the Lord, you shall always have those who are steadfast and those who remain on course fulfilling the purpose you've ordained for us, Lord, in the, on earth. This I pray in Jesus' name.